Hi everyone, I am going to talk about what matter is and we are going to group matter into different classifications. So the first question, what is matter? So matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. So your phone is made up of matter. My um, iPad pencil is made up of matter. So anything that has mass and takes up space is going to be what matter is. Um, matter actually comes in five different states, uh, solid liquids and gases you've probably heard of. Plasma is the uh, fourth natural state, and then there's actually a man-made um, that's called the Boise-Einstein condensates, which was in 1995, that we actually have a man-made state of matter. Um, so all of matter is made up of atoms. And so I've got these little models here to represent some atoms for us. So this one has an N on it for nitrogen. So atoms are going to be the smallest particle that possesses the properties of that element. Um, so for example, um, oxygen. Every single atom of oxygen is going to have the same properties. Oxygen always has the same density, always has the same um, boiling points, um, melting temperatures, all the properties are going to be the same. So these little spikes here represent electrons. We'll talk about those later, but for right now, this is an atom. So atoms are found on the periodic table. So this is an atom of oxygen. This is an atom of phosphorus. This is an atom of sulfur. So notice that I didn't say it is the smallest particle. Um, atoms are not the smallest. They are made up of even smaller particles, but they are the smallest material that maintains the properties of that um, element. Um, and so some of them don't like to float around as single atoms. Some of them prefer to be what is called diatomic. And so diatomic means that two of the atoms connect to each other. And so I'm not gonna call this an atom actually, I'm going to call this a molecule. So anytime we have more than one atom together, it can be the same atom, like this diatomic element, I would call this a molecule, I would call this an atom. So this is an atom, this is a molecule of oxygen. And this is the way that oxygen um, floats around naturally around us is as O2, not as individual oxygen atoms. They float around as oxygen molecules. And then we have things like compounds. Compounds are going to be when you have two different elements. So I've got hydrogen here, and hydrogen is bonding with the oxygen and so this is a molecule as well, but this is a molecule of a compound because it is made up of two different elements. We've got oxygen and we have hydrogen. So a compound is going to be made of two different elements. So this would be water, and I would also call it a molecule. This is also a molecule, but this is a molecule of an element and this is an atom. One way that we can classify matter is by the state of matter that it is in. So my first example is solids. Solids, when the molecules are in the solid states, the atoms are in the solid state, the atoms and molecules are gonna be very close together. And they're gonna just vibrate right in their location, okay? And so in a solid, they have a fixed shape and a fixed volume, meaning that my phone here, it's going to keep this shape, and if I were to take its length, its width, and its height, and calculate its volume, it's going to have a set volume. Even if I were to crunch it up, it's still going to take up that same amount of space. So solid atoms and molecules just kind of stay very close together and vibrate right next to each other. Liquids, on the other hand, when you have something like a drink in your cup, 
liquids are going to um, take the shape of the container they're within. And that's because the atoms and molecules can kind of flow past each other a little bit more freely. So they're still going to have a set volume. If I measure the amount of liquid in my cup and then I pour it into a different cup, I'm still gonna have the same volume, but the shape that the liquid takes is different because those molecules can flow past one another. And then finally, we have gases. When we have gases, the molecules are actually flying all over the place and they're very far spread apart. That's one of the reasons we can't see um, all the different gases around us is those molecules are so far apart, they're not compact into one place and they have the most amount of energy as they are flying around the room. So we said that matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. So what are some things that are not matter? Well, we have to stop and think about what are some things that are not made of atoms. A good example is energy. The light energy that's coming into my room here, it's not made up of atoms, and so it is not matter. Um, most forms of energy, kinetic energy, potential energy, um, the heat energy that you feel coming off of a fire, that is not going to be matter. Um, the sound that you hear coming from my voice is not matter. It is not made up of atoms. Time is not matter and gravity is not matter. None of those things are made up of atoms. So we take matter, things that are made up of atoms, and we divide it into two different groups. We call them pure substances and not pure substances. Pure substances means that the physical properties do not change. So I have a molecule of water here. This water, whether I have one molecule or a whole cup full, of water molecules, they're all going to have the same properties. They are always going to melt and freeze at zero degrees Celsius. It is always going to have the same density. It is always going to boil at 100 degrees Celsius. So water is a compound. That is one of two different types of pure substances. Compounds are pure substances because as long as everything is just that one molecule of that compound, you're always going to have the same properties. Another type of pure substance includes elements. Elements are always going to maintain the same properties as well. So if I have a single atom of gold or I have a whole chunk of gold. Every single atom of gold, whether it be a whole chunk or a single atom, are going to have the same properties. So if somebody hands me a chunk of gold, I can check and make sure it's pure by checking its density because every single chunk of gold is going to have the same density. Every chunk of gold, if it's pure gold, is going to melt at the same temperature and is going to be a solid at the same temperatures. So individual elements are pure substances and compounds are pure substances as well. We can also classify matter as a not pure substance. These are also known as mixtures. So when we have a mixture, the physical properties are going to vary. What I mean is that if I were to make a mixture of salt water, I could put a lot of water and very little salt in this cup. I can vary how salty my cup of water tastes. I could add more salt so that it's very salty. This is a mixture. So a good example of a mixture would be a cup of salt water. I can vary how dense that water is by either having more salt or less salt. I can vary the taste of that salt water mixture by how much salt I do or don't put in. So we classify not pure substances or mixtures into two different types. We call them homogeneous or heterogeneous mixtures. So when you make a cup of salt water, you can mix in that salt, and I could hand you this cup of salt water and tell you it's sugar water. And you wouldn't know until you drank some of it that it's actually not sugar water. 
And so when we can't see all of the particles and materials that are in the mixture, like in a cup of salt water or a cup of sugar water, we're gonna call that homogenous. Now, if I were to make you maybe a glass of orange juice, and I made a fresh glass of orange juice, and it had some pulp in it, you could see the pulp floating around in the cup. And so because I can see the parts, we're gonna call that heterogeneous. An example I like with heterogeneous also is like gravel or a bunch of rocks and sand particles at a beach. You can actually see all the different colors and the different pieces. We could pick them apart. That would also be a heterogeneous mixture. So here's our first example. The first thing we have to decide when we classify the matter, is this a pure substance or is this a mixture? Take a minute to pause the video, draw the picture on your paper and decide if this is a pure substance or not a pure substance and it's a mixture. Then come back and see if you got it correctly. Once you've decided on if this is a pure substance or not a pure substance, then we can decide if it's homogeneous or heterogeneous. Now, if you said that this is a mixture, then we can say if it's homogeneous or heterogeneous. But this is not a mixture. This is a pure substance. Pure substances are never categorized as homogeneous or heterogeneous. So we can cross that out on our paper completely since this is a pure substance. The next thing, is this an element or is this a compound? If I look at my image here, I see that I've got two different kinds of atoms. I've got three blue atoms attached to one red atom. And so since I have two different atoms bonded to each other, that means that I'm going to have a compound, not an element. Now, do we have atoms or do we have molecules here? Well, since we decided that this is a compound, since compounds are always two or more atoms bonded together, it has to be a molecule. So these are going to be molecules. And then finally, how would we symbolize this? Well, I'm gonna use the letter capital B for blue, and I'm gonna use the letter capital R for red. Each of these molecules of this compound have three blues and one red. So if I were to write the formula for this, I would write um, a capital R and then a capital B and a subscript of a three next to the capital B so that I can show that I have three blue atoms bonded to one red atom. So here is example number two. And our first thing that you need to do on your paper is you need to draw the image and decide, do you have a pure substance or do you have a mixture here? So pause the video, take a minute, draw the image and decide if you have a pure substance or a mixture. Now remember, depending on if you decided pure substance or mixture is going to decide if you are even going to classify this as homogeneous or heterogeneous. Because remember, pure substances are not classified as homogeneous or heterogeneous. Only mixtures are. So if I look at this, I have triangles and I have squares. So these might represent two different kinds of atoms. Since I do not have all of the same atom or all of the same molecule, I would say that this is a mixture because I've got two different materials here. The blue might represent salt and maybe the uh, triangles are going to represent the water. And so I have a mixture. My next step is to decide if this is a homogeneous mixture or a heterogeneous mixture. Now this is kind of hard because I can see all my different parts because I have a drawing here. So I would say that this is heterogeneous since I can see all of my different parts. You may have said homogeneous because the number of parts are equal to each other. Sometimes when we have a mixture where the number of parts are equal, we can't tell the difference between the materials. And so we might call it homogeneous. Um, 
So this is a little bit difficult to say whether I would classify this as homogenous or heterogeneous, but if you justified your answer like I just did, I would take either answer. The next thing is to decide, is this a mixture of elements or a mixture of compounds or a mixture of both? Well, a lot of times when we have a single individual particle, that's going to represent just an atom. So maybe the triangles are atoms of aluminum and the squares are atoms of zinc. And I have a mixture of aluminum and zinc mixed together. And so I might call this a mixture of atoms or a mixture of elements, not compounds here. Um, if you were to say that the triangles represent water, then you could say that that's a, a mixture that includes a compound because water is a compound. Again, if this was an open-ended question, you could justify your answer with an explanation. Um, atoms, molecules, or both. So like I said, each of these symbols might represent individual atoms. Typically one shape is going to represent an individual atom. So um, I probably would not call these compounds. I would call this a mixture of atoms, the triangles being one atom and the squares representing a different atom. And then if I were to uh, symbolize these particles, um, it looks like I've got triangles. So I might say that this is a mixture of T and um, I've got squares. So maybe this is a mixture of T and SQ. I'm actually gonna put the word and in between to show that they're not bonded together, that this is a mixture of those different materials. All right, here is our last example. First thing, pause the video and draw the image and decide if this is a pure substance or a mixture. Then decide um, if you said it was a mixture, you should decide if it's homogeneous or heterogeneous. If it's not a mixture, then you don't choose that because pure substances are not classified as homogeneous or heterogeneous. If you said it's a pure substance, then you're gonna decide if it's an element or a compound. Are these atoms? Are these molecules? Or is it both atoms and molecules? Is this a mono? monatomic element or a diatomic element? And what formula could you use to symbolize these particles? So take a minute, pause the video before you listen to me going over all of it. And so what we have here is a pure substance. We have molecules of an element. Um, both of our circles are blue. And so that means that that is going to represent uh, the same atom, but they are bonded together. So this is a pure substance. Um, they, it is an element. This might be oxygen, perhaps, like I had shown you with oxygen bonding together as a diatomic molecule like this. So maybe this is oxygen. Um, so it is an element, not a compound. Uh, it would be a molecule. Remember that this is an atom, but when we put two together, it is a molecule. So we're gonna call that a molecule. We're going to call this a diatomic element. Um, and the formula that I would use, let's just say it's oxygen. I could say O2. If you wanted to, you could use B for blue. So we could call this B2. Uh, that would be the formula that would be appropriate for this pure substance that is a molecule of an element.